Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market. And today I'm struck and reminded again about all of the moving parts in real estate. And many of you and me, we're trying to figure out where this market's going. Where are we going to be next year? What's it going to look like by Christmas? And uh, in fact, I had a conversation with a, with a YouTuber yesterday and I love it when you guys call me. It's great. We found out we both used to live in the same town in Western New York. <laughs> so we had a little kindred spirit there. And uh, so we had a conversation about what, uh, if you're buying cash, <clears throat> when do we think is going to be a good time to make a move in a particular price point? So then you just end up with these statistics rattling around your head and you end up not only looking at the, uh, the numbers and the data, or is it data? We look at the data and then uh, you kind of look at the psychology too. And throughout the conversation, one of the things that we came back to was, you know, there's going to be probably a lot of anxiety around the end of the year, simply because by then we may have seen a increase in rates that really slows sales down even more than they are right now. And I'm going to show you what's going on with that. And, uh, and then, you know, there's always anxiety around an election, although um, elections normally don't change the current trend of real estate. If real estate's going up and you have an election, uh, it still goes up. If it's going down, it still goes down, whether or not you have an election. But we have anxiety and some of us just crawl into a little cocoon. So I think if you're looking for opportunities and, uh, and you're not in the arena where you have to worry about interest rates, that maybe... November, December might be a, a time um, to, to find something. But what's interesting is when I look at this morning and kind of go through and read some of the news, and I'm looking here at interest rates, and uh, it says untrend, unfriendly trend as the Fed fear sets in. And rates are five and three quarters on a national average right now. So I'm kind of focused on the Fed fear. It shows you again in uh, in bond trading and in real estate that feelings and emotions drive markets. And right now what they're worried about, and it says here, without any, I'll lower my mug here for a second, without any obvious individual motivations in the news or the economic calendar, bonds sold off moderately again today. The size of the losses wasn't as relevant relevant as the fact that the mortgage-backed securities and treasuries easily hit their weakest level in just over a month. The linear two-day sell-off in stocks provides a clue when taken in conjunction with last week's developments. It suggests the market is afraid of what the Fed has to say about the current stance of monetary policy heading into September meeting, and that we may have to face those fears in Powell's Jackson Hole speech this Friday. So the market's moving in anticipation of what Chairman Powell may say and what the central bank may do. And this is key to understanding how interest rates move because we tend to get just focused on um, their meetings and how many basis points are they raising the interest rate when there's more to it than that. Yes, that's a driving factor and we watch it all the time and Nine times out of 10, you see them going up 0.75 basis points and mortgage rates went down and we're going, huh? It's because of things like this. The anticipation of what they're going to say is already moving the markets. And what's interesting is we were all giddy. You know, two weeks ago, we were down to 5.1%. And when you get down like that, whenever rates come down, the talk and the feeling is this is looking good. Rates are coming down and maybe you lock, maybe you don't because, you know, they might come down just a little bit farther. Well, now that it's gone up to 5.75, what do you do? Are you going to lock at 5.75 or are you going to sit back and wait? I think people, once again, are going to sit back and wait because here's what I'm seeing just this morning is look how seven day moving average has dropped off uh, rather significantly, you know, compared to just two days ago. And once again, new listings continue to drop. So there's little tiny moves in there. And uh, 
So it's so rate sensitive right now. And the other thing that's going on in the market, and we keep talking about it and people are beating up realtors. Why do you care so much about open door? Well, they're right now they're 11% of the market. Open door has 2,520 homes for sale in our market. And get this, I'm going to look off to the right here. In July, they only sold 151 of those. Divide that out. They have a 17-month supply of homes, just that one company. 17-month supply. We always say that normal supply is four to six months. And here they're at, at almost a higher supply, just about the higher supply than we had before the crash of 2008 individually this isn't we don't have a 17 month supply in total inventory by any stretch of the imagination we are still hanging at 18,600 18,700 that listing ceiling has happened here we go stay right there but now these guys and people are saying well they're dumping their homes on the market isn't that going to affect the values well it's hard to tell and i'll tell you why it's morning folks <clears throat> they did they affect the values when they overpaid for them? Because those would have showed up in the appraisals and they grossly overpaid for these homes. And so they overpaid, they marked them way up, rates changed, people no longer can afford to pay what they were asking. So they're coming down 100, 150. But it is interesting though, trying to get there. I actually spoke with them yesterday and they said they are really busy. They're getting so many offers every day. Of course, she wouldn't tell me what I think is happening. I think everybody's trying to lowball them. In this market, when you see somebody come down 100,000 that quick, you're going to go, they'll come down another 50. I know they will. Let me, let me get them there. Go to their price. Don't wait for their price to come to you. You hear me say that often. <laughs> People are doing that. So they're busy. So they're busy reviewing offers. We've tossed the one that was really low and we're trying to find that middle area now. They're not as uh, flexible as we would think they were given that they came down 100,000 then came down another 50,000. We think, well, let's pull them down another 25. Haven't been able to do it yet. We're still trying. We're still swinging that bat today. But they have uh, a huge supply and it also says here, I'll go ahead and pull this up. You may not be able to even come close to reading it, but I'll see if I can highlight something here. Um, it says, in the same period, we saw seven sales by OfferPad. Seven homes in a month is all they sold. Since they seem to be less willing to take a write down on their homes for sale, we calculate they may have roughly 495 homes in inventory, which represents 11 months of supply at their rate of 45. However, this strategy means their sales volume in August is very low. The average profit made on homes that sold since August 10th is more healthy at plus 5.8%. They're saying that in uh, the iBuyer homes with open door, that they're losing about 4.4%. But we don't know for sure because we don't really know what fees they charge everybody. So they may have more wiggle room in there than we think. But at 11% of the market, um, they're, they're the ones driving the bus right now when it comes to pricing and pricing actions. When we see go into the MLS and we look at the number of price reductions over a seven day period that shows up uh, tremendously. Cause right now I'm seeing 5,700 homes uh, that have reduced their price over a seven day period. How many of those were open door? So it is skewing the data a little bit and it's skewing the data, not because prices are coming down, which they are, but if you take their 11% versus the rest of the market, theirs are coming down faster because they have to unload them because they have all this holding cost. So they're 11% of the market. But some of their moves they make in certain categories, when you look at the data, it's going to have an impact, such as price reductions. They had a big dump August 4th. Boom, lowered all these prices. And you can see it in the charts. All these price reductions went up over 6,000. That's not your everyday single family homeowner that's doing that. That's one, one brokerage. So um, it's an interesting one to watch. And we know that they want to get rid of them by the end of the quarter. They're offering generous uh, bonuses for real estate agents um, to bring them a buyer that closes before the end of September. They're offering uh, $2,500 in closing cost assistance if you use their lender. So they're just throwing the kitchen sink at you, trying to get you to buy the home on top of finally realistically pricing the home. But 
it should be a lesson to everybody out there in selling a home that when you start out way too high and then you really pull back, that doesn't make people come running to you to give you your asking price. That sends an image that says you made this huge move once. They're probably willing to make it again. So you have to be a lot more strategic in how you price your home. Try not to overprice and test the market. That's going to eat you alive every time. And Open Door is a classic example of that. Builders, they're not doing that right now. Builders are throwing everything at you as well. The amount of dollar credits that you can get from their uh, design center keeps going up, up, and up. Right now, it's around ten dollars to $15,000 in our market area. In Las Vegas, it's something like $30,000. So, but they, they're keeping the base price right there because they don't want to lower it. And they may just leave the base price alone and just stop building for a while and wait till things shake out. That's why I've always warned people when you're out looking at new construction homes, just keep in mind that if things turn, you might end up living next to dirt for a while. So we'll have to see what happens. This interest rate move over the course of this week is going to be bouncing around like a ping pong ball. And I hope that we can talk to Pat on Friday about that. And we're also trying to get the president of United Wholesale Mortgage on as well, because Pat is going to be in Detroit with a meeting with those people. And we want to see what's uh, going on there, because I'm certainly not a chart analyst by the, what do I want to say, any stretch of the imagination. Other than that, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Take care.